Good morning and welcome to our short reading today. This is the Collect. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our reading today is from Titus chapter 3. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle towards everyone. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My thoughts for today on our reading. Whether we are reading the Old Testament books of Samuel or Kings, let's say, or hearing Isaiah the prophet speak, or listening to the words of Jesus and the apostles, there's a constant reminder in Scripture that we should seek to obey the proper leaders of state in all honest and good commands, but that we should look to the Lord God as the one who alone can save. Whether we see believers blindly and totally following any political party or leader or structures to the point that they lose the ability to discriminate between right and wrong and good and bad, when they come to believe that there's only one right way and that's the one taught by our Prime Minister or President or our Pastor or our Rector. At that point, we risk turning to that leader or party for our needs rather than to God. Ten men with leprosy were healed by Jesus. They had turned to him for help. That was a good thing. And the moral lesson of the story of those ten men is usually Don't forget to say thank you. But the deeper message is an important one too. As the one in the ten discovered that the Jesus who provided healing and to whom he returned to give thanks is also the one at whose feet we ought to fall down and worship. He is the king we worship, not our tradition or our party or our elected leaders. There's a more direct teaching here in Titus. There Paul says that people should be subject to rulers and authorities. In one sense, we are all subject to those authorities anyway. They do have the material power to control us, in a sense. But perhaps what Paul is reminding us is that it is okay to live under earthly rules. We don't have to be forever protesting every issue with which we disagree but he offers the proviso to do whatever is good. In other words, there is a concept of good which exceeds the opinion of a ruler, be they gracious or tyrannical, and that is to be our guide. God is good, and what he has taught us is good. His word reveals the truth, the righteous one and his righteous ways, and he is to be our guide even as we live under more or less perfect leadership in the world around us today. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will restore us to a place of peace in our world and in our communities. We are aware of the conflicts going on, both within the political life of our nation and across the world, and also of the constant spiritual battle which goes on between right and wrong, between power and truth. 
between might and right. Help us, we pray, Lord God, by your grace, to be those who seek the right thing, do whatever is good, and seek to be subject where we can to those who are in authority over us. Give grace to all who lead, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.